This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones. All gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Say hello to our friends jumping on a 90 at Rock, California's hello. rock station in Sacramento, California. A also 96.5 WCMF in Rochester, New York. Rochester's classic rock and our friends on the keg, 98.3 the keg in lovely Fayetteville, Arkansas. Welcome to the program. Ted versus the FCC coming up. Bad jokes as well. And our question, what was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. You know, and to these other states, you joined us at a fantastic time. We have Craig on the line. Craig is going on about his childhood. His parents bought him a pet hamster. His pet hamster turned out to be pregnant. Craig had to buy a second cage for these beautiful pink little babies. And, Craig, you're explaining that uh, they could walk on their own, but due to their size, they found an escape from this new cage you'd bought them. Yeah, they, they were like little gymnasts, I swear. I found them <laughs> yes. actually hanging off of the ceiling of the cage. Uh, it was one of those little wire cages with, uh, with levels on it. How many hamsters would you say there were? 10, 20? I mean, how many was the litter? Uh, d- uh, for this particular litter, there were 12. Damn. But uh, by the end of everything, there were about uh, 26. That's a lot. Because, okay. uh, because they uh, they decided to breed with each other later on. But that's uh, that's uh, like a about uh, six months down the road from this. Wait, the litter bre- bred with itself? Yes. Damn, hamster. Did they play banjos? Males and females yeah. there. Right. They formed their own jug band? Right. Yeah, but I mean... Okay. I, had, I had another three litters I had to take care of after, after that. But wait, and this is the brothers and sisters just having sex with each other? Pretty much. Do you uh-huh. ever end up like a three-legged, one-eyed hamster, or do they still just kind of <laughs> act and look the same? No, they pretty much act the same. They, right, but they, uh, they but this, look relatively normal. But this first litter, they escape, you said, and I'm guessing they climbed into your heating system. Yes, and uh, I got all but one of them, and I we just couldn't find this other one. Well, it was uh, it was just in the beginning of fall, so we finally uh, we finally turn on the heat, oh, and uh, all of a sudden, just a, the stench of death just walked through the entire mm-hmm. house. It is nasty. Every single room was just permeated. And, of course, my dad knew exactly what, uh, what had happened. Yeah. How long did it uh, take to find the uh, the dead hamster, though? <laughs> well, he ended up getting to have the lovely job of taking apart the, uh, the heat ducting uh, <laughs> to get all the way to the fan. And here was this, uh, this hamster that it had its belly sliced open. Oh. Un- <laughs> and it was glued uh, to the floor. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, man. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, there was a family of birds that got into behind my microwave oven where the exhaust fan is. They, they, they had lifted up the vent. Yeah. They made a nest. They get in there. You could hear the moving around. You could hear the you could hear when the mom brought the little baby birds, you know, yeah. food, and they would chirp and everything. And then all of a sudden, it was gone. They'd all grown up, moved out. A couple weeks go by, and my wife is like, hey, what are, the, what are these white things that are raining down uh, from, the, from the exhaust fan the, underneath the microwave? The microwave sits above the oven, and there's a fan under it. What, what are these white things dropping down? And as I look and I get closer, I see all these white things are, in fact, moving. And I look closer, and they look like little tiny crabs. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is that? And then, you got crabs! And then the smell of death hits. Mm. Turns out one of those birds didn't make it. Oh. And it was in there, man. And basically, it was just being infested by mites <sighs> and all these things. They had to bomb the entire house. It was the smell of de- I mean, it, it hits you, and you just stand up. It's, it's, it's intense how bad that was. How long, how long did the stink stay in your house? Two days until we got the people to come and, and, and get that thing out of there. And they were having a hard time pulling it out. It was But in the abominable. time that you're waiting for these people to show up, are these things still kind of just snowing? They are, they are snowing down. <sighs> Everything had to be thrown away. Everything. And he also uh, made me remember of a time I had two Oscars growing up. And okay. when you set up a fish tank, there's a platform that you put down at the bottom of the fish tank that has an area of about an inch underneath it. Mm-hmm. So think of like an inch platform where water is underneath 
the very bottom of the fish tank. The rocks go on top of that, and right. that allows the filter to work. The air can go under sure. there. The bubbles pop up, the whole deal. I've got two, I can't remember if they're Jack Dempsey's or Oscar's. They were bigger fish, paired up. But one day I realized, hey, it looks like there's little eggs in there. I think these guys have made it. They're, they're about ready to, you know, have some babies. So mm. then mm, no, baby making. no babies. You know what? I'm like, all right, well, maybe they're... They eat their young, you know, there's all these sure. eggs, and now they, all these eggs are gone. Uh, a couple of weeks go by, two or three weeks go by, all of a sudden my water starts getting really cloudy, it's got this green hue, I don't know what's going on, because I'm pretty good about cleaning my tank, the filtration system's working and everything else, I'm like, you know what, it, it probably just needs a complete overhaul. So, when I clean everything out and I pick that stuff up, there are 20 baby oh. Oscars, and some of them are only an inch some of them are an inch and a half. They were all living underneath that plate. The filtration system had sucked all the eggs underneath them. They were actually living under them. Were they alive? When they you were them? alive. They had lived for a long oh. time. I didn't even know that was where the smell was coming from and everything else. And when I lifted that plate up, there were literally 20 dead baby Oscars at the bottom of my fish tank. And I had no idea they were there. That is so gross. Man. It was disgusting. So it's like corpse water. Oh, yeah. it was. That's exactly what it was. It's just they were swimming in death man, like of their own children. Oh, so think about your two fish. Like, <laughs> that's the smell of our dead kids. No idea they were in there. Yeah. The they were like, the water. And they are like, help me. Change the water. Help me, Nemo. And yeah, nobody man. would help them because no one knew they were in there. But they were down there like, God damn it, we can't. <laughs> And then they died and they stunk. <laughs> but they were, able, they were able to grow, like, all the food that kind of got still got filtered through and everything. I mean, they lived. How long do you think but they, they lived? But they didn't live. They, they didn't did not live. survive. No, they did not, they did not they survive. But they lived enough to grow. So yeah, but they got stuck under the platform to grow. There, man, yeah. What was That's the uh, so gross? What man. was the source of the smell? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. They suffocated in water, but they're fish. That's even worse. Right? Yeah, and they then drowned. their parents have to smell your dead kids because water was changed the goddamn water. That's the smell of Billy. <laughs> Hello, Jonathan. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So, uh, back when I was in high school, I uh, went to a boarding school, and the boys' dorm wanted to play a prank on on the girls' dorm. And they, I was really into fishing, so my buddies asked me if I had any, like, fish or something. And I had these little bait fish called smelts. Mm-hmm. And so we'd plan to do this, this dorm raid and put the fish in the girls' dorm, but uh, we couldn't do it the night we planned. So my buddies decided to leave the smelts in a lunchbox outside for almost a week. Oh. And then continued with the dorm raid, covered the dorm in nasty old rotting fish. How bad did it smell? It, it was really gross. You guys I mean, were trying to... Was, why are you trying to you're trying to get laid, right? I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have no, I'm kidding. I have I have I have, I have, I have many questions. Uh, so you you were you're in a you say you're in a boarding school that also had yeah. females. Okay, yeah. why why did you end up in a boarding school? Was it based on the fact that you were a good student or you were a piss poor student? Uh, it was actually kind of weird. It was a I went there because it was a ski and snowboard academy, so I snowboarded. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. nice. So this is like yeah. so you're rich. No. This is nothing like my life growing I up. That's what I'm trying I mean, to like, 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 wait, on. what? If my, if my parents told me at 14 years old that I could go away to a high school or a school mm -hmm. where I lived there away from them and it was also co-ed. And it, it's one of my main interests in life. Sure. You know what? I, I, I'd be like, yeah, get me the F out of here. Seriously. Did they ask you to go to that school? Sorry? They're like, Did they ask you, were, like, were you that good or could you just pay to go to the school? Yeah, you could just pay to go. Oh, and right. were you in high school? Yeah, and you. So, just did went... your parents want to get rid of you, or had you right. done so much great stuff that they were rewarding you? No, I. It was kind of a reward. I actually, I lived very close. Um, okay, my, all right, yeah, all right. That's that, that's very unique, man. Man, oh man. Right. I mean, I, look. I took a little time out of high school to go to snowboarding school, snowboarding academy. Yeah, academy. Graduated like, in broadness. Like I <laughs> went to high school with a guy that was so good at soccer after his freshman year. He went to, like, the national team thing yeah, and, and But they Florida. asked for you, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They come knocking. I can't imagine my parents saying, hey, you know, high school is high school, but we know you like whatever. Would you like to go the, to the snowboarding academy, Steve? You want to go to, like, like, like yeah. I'm black. No. But look, I put, yeah. they said, hey, listen, we love you, so 
We don't want you to be under our roof because at 14, we know you're going to make the best decisions and we want to send you somewhere co-ed and we want you just to pursue whatever your hobby is that you really, really like. There's not a chance in hell that that would have ever, even if right. I came to them and begged and pleaded, they'd have been like, no. That, that's why I had to ask, are you, are you, uh, were you horrible or are you incredibly wealthy? But see, I don't, even with my kids now, I mean, if they're outstanding, remarkable, they're the next freaking down. Okay, love, wait, hold on. You're still hold not on, going. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I'm not sending let's your just, ass Let's though. just assume that someone comes and says, hey. One of these children is very gifted in this one Take way. Them. Yeah, exactly. Right. Listen, yeah, no, no, yeah. but there's a difference, okay? There's a difference. What do you say, if your kids say, can I have dinner at so-and-so's house, what is the first question you ask? Do their parents know? Did they ask you? Yes. If they invited yes. you, yes. you can go. So, look, if someone's telling me your kid is so gifted, I mean, I know this is not going to happen, but let's suppose they said that. Absolutely. If my your kid Your daughter's said, a genius. We want her to go to this academy. Suit yourself. I believe that. <laughs> Have fun. Pre- <laughs> prepare yourself for this. Prepare for her to be sent back in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I give you two weeks. Right. Here's a dollar. I bet you a dollar. I bet you a dollar. But uh, <laughs> we'll be back before October. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, you know, here's my number, man. Call me in the middle of the night. Because that's how this is going to so go. It's chocolate milk time, isn't it? Right. What was, the, uh, what was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. More your calls uh, coming up. Also, the return of Ted versus the FCC. And Ryan Castle, the drunk in charge, will be in to kick off the bad jokes right before we drink and toast with a shot of the day. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. An airplane full of tourists forced to divert after a passenger's foul-smelling body odor reportedly caused those around him to vomit and some to faint. The Transavia Boeing 737 took off from the uh, Scheifel Airport of the Netherlands, headed for Grand Canaria, but instead it touched down in Faro, Portugal. At one point, flight crew reportedly tried to quarantine the unwashed man in a toilet before the pilots decided to say the hell with it and divert the flight. How bad do you smell when they divert a flight? Passengers reportedly mm-hmm. became increasingly distressed by the stench of the male holiday maker with some fainting and vomiting. Due to the incident, the plane landed in Faro. A picture taken by one of the passengers shows medical personnel taking the smelly man from the airplane into a bus. A Belgian passenger was one of the passengers on board the plane and described the stench of the man in question as unbearable. Smell it. Belgian, uh, he said, it was like he hadn't washed himself for several weeks. Several passengers got sick, and they had to puke. They had to puke. They had to puke. Yes. You think it's more make an emergency landing. crotch. You know what I mean? Like, there's thick armpit smell. You don't like it, but you can deal with it. Every once in a while, you get the homeless, I peed in my pants, mm-hmm. yes. fairly recently right. smell. That one's tough. I mean, you think he smelled like butt, armpit, a little bit of everything? It's not known why the man was smelling so foul or what medical issue he was suffering from, if there was one. A Transavia spokesperson said the airplane diverted because of medical reasons, but it is indeed right that he smelled quite a bit. The medical reasons were for the other passengers. Bizarrely, it was not, that's exactly right. It was not the first smelly incident on a Transavia flight this year. You'll remember back in February, a Transavia plane from Dubai to Amsterdam was forced to make an emergency landing after a passenger could not stop farting, oh. which then caused a fight between several passengers. I remember that story. It's the same airline? Same airline. Damn, man. Our do question. you see the common threat? Yes, we do. Yeah. The Netherlands. <laughs> what uh, What was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. Maybe they should just call it the nether regions. They Maybe. Can explain a lot more. Uh, we got a couple of comments here as far as uh, what was the source of the smell? says, when I was a little kid, about as tall as my dad's butt, I was following him, helping him carry groceries when he farted. It was so rancid, I puked all over the back of his pants instantly. My mom, who was directly behind me, carrying groceries as well, laughed and laughed and laughed hard. So my son is the youngest, and my brothers have sons as well. So all three boys get together for a sleepover, and they decide to dare, all caps, dare my son to go poop in the cabinet in the bathroom. So let's fast forward a few days. The bathroom just starts stinking real bad, and I finally find the poo and had to talk to the three boys. And, of course, my son was the one who pooed, and the other two boys dared him to do it. Good times. <laughs> what was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. You know they hit him with the double dog dare. Okay, fine. Hello, Eastwood. Welcome to the men's room. Peace, love, and happiness. Hola. Hola. <laughs> oh, God, to you too, there, yeah. Miles. All right. I love you guys. So, uh, anyway, I was living out in SeaTac. We had two killer Akitas, uh 
spike and barren, and they kill anything that come in the yard. And one day I was getting up to go to work using the company rig, and I see this dead possum laying there. So I went and double bagged him, tied a knot, and threw it in the back of the van, and went up to work, and I forgot all about him. He <laughs> stayed in there for about two days in the summertime, hot bacon summertime. Then Dick Clark went out and found him and opened the bag, and then I got threatened to be fired over it, but Dick finally got over it. But I guess it was one of the worst rancid smells he said he ever smelled. And, yeah, it's a dead possum in a bag yeah. for two days uh-huh. in the heat. Did you say well, I, Dick I Clark? Smelled worse, so lots worse, but he, you know, he, he kind of exaggerated. Was the guy's name really Dick Clark? Yeah, yeah, Dick worked up there at Pepsi for 42 years, retired the lead mechanic. He was the lead up there. Oh, right. you just so nonchalantly yeah, said that. Like, Dick, Dick Clark he, found he him. Like, on, he grew up on 43rd and Corliss, and I was 40th in Burke, and we all went to Interlake, Hamilton, and Lincoln, and so we kind of Yeah, yeah, it. no, what no, we're no, saying no, is It's just this. funny that his name is Dick, Dick Clark. Clark. Yeah, yeah, well, I had to watch myself because I was always going, you know, I like Dick, and everybody's going, whatever, you know, so I had to, I like Richard, you know, I had to change it. Uh, somehow he's missed all uh, of the yeah, relevance yeah, exactly. of Dick Clark. Eastwood, Do you know like any it. other Dick Clark besides your friend Eastwood? Yeah, the guy, you know, the, you know, what counted the bubble down until you could forget how to count down from ten. Yeah. All right, all right, just checking. Just checking. The, you didn't miss that social cue through all those years there. Did it, did it seem to you that the the Dick Clark that we all recognize is Dick, Dick Clark? Clark right? yeah, somehow, Bandstand, like because Dick most Clark. of the time, if I say, "Hey, man." Miles was upset. I wouldn't say Miles Montgomery unless you know who Miles Montgomery. And I wanted you to know specifically. But Dick Clark. But when we ask him about it, it seems like, yeah, what's so weird about that? Well, and Dick Clark is such a famous name. I thought it was like the office dog. Right. Oh, there's Dick Clark. Yeah. My buddy Johnny Carson. <laughs> you I mean, name like, your dog Dick Clark. That'd be all right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you give a. T- hey, yeah. meet Dick Clark. <laughs> Believe it or not, he's 15 years old. Still looks like a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> Dick Clark, everybody. Okay. What was the source of the smell? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. I actually do like when people name their dogs celebrity names. What's a good one you've heard? Oh, God. I do like Dick Clark. That's kind of nice. Mr. Peanut Butter. Who the hell is Mr. <laughs> Peanut Butter? He's a character on BoJack Horseman, but he's a dog. Okay, I'm like, so if you name your dog that, it's oh, funny. Dog. So would you name your dog like Lassie or Benji Cujo? Well, I mean, yeah. You get the occasional Maybe. Cujo, but you know if they say my dog's name is Cujo, that dog weighs ten pounds or less. Dude, what about a fa- like a famous musician? Like this is Jimmy Page. Yeah. Would you name him Flea? I mean, it's your dog. <laughs> yeah. It just, yeah. Yeah. That might Hell be yeah. the best name. Right. Right? Sure. This is Rob Zombie. Be better than Chad Smith. You could go with just Hendrix. Oh, well, Hendrix. A lot of people do that. A lot right. of people do that. What uh, What was the source of the smell? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. Then of course you could only drink gin. Right. This is Pee Wee Herman right here. This is Snoop. <laughs> Thank you. That's all. Anyway. For some reason, anyway. my first thought was like, Kanye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. This is Kanye the dog. <laughs> Sorry, the dog. Easy. Hello, Aaron. Welcome to the bedroom. Hola. Hola. So, uh, my story takes place back when I was in Job Corps, right? And I was, uh, I was doing welding, and our instructor had left, so we're all messing around being a bunch of idiots because we're young and dumb, and we're throwing pieces of metal at each other, right? Good times. And, uh, my, uh, one of my friends, he wasn't there that day, but he, he would chew tobacco all the time, and he'd always spit into the same jar. And I saw it up there when my buddy was coming close to me, act like he was going to chuck another piece of metal at me, act like I was going to splash it on him. Mm. And uh, when I opened it up, it kind of sounded like when you crack open a soda, like that sound. Mm. And... The overwhelming smell was just so <laughs> rancid that literally everybody just cleared out of the warehouse, like, instantaneously. Like, I've smelled a lot of things that have made me gag, but this made everybody throw up uncontrollably. Like, he, it was just... And he was opening it up and, smit, and spitting into it regularly if he was there? Yeah. He would do it, he would chew, like, all the time, so... All right. Probably couldn't smell anything. And this, and this like, sat up on his logger, like, I don't know, I guess, like, three or four days, and... We're in Moses Lake, so it would get really hot during the summertime, so it was, like, just fermenting in itself, and it, it, it was horrible. It was, like, the most rancid fart you would ever smell with, like, rotting meat and, like, <sighs> ammonia mixed with menthol because he would chew menthol back, <laughs> yeah. and it was just horrible. Mm-hmm. Man, oh, man, you know what you should do? Find a way to sneak that into somebody's Febreze can. Oh, that would be freaking genius, man. What was the uh, what was the source of the smell? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. We're talking about uh, naming your pets after uh, celebrities. 
Well, apparently, I'll just give you a few that have uh, popped up. We have a Carlos Santana. All right. We have a cat named Phil Collins. We have a dog named Kevin Bacon. We have a Bar- Bob Barker Keller, Jimi Hendrix. There's another Bob Barker. Apparently, Bob- oh, that makes sense, right? Because he's barking. Right. Randy Jackson. <laughs> what up, dog? Randy right. Jackson. Oh, yeah, that one makes sense. Oh, man. Yeah, so okay. uh, let's see. St. Bernard, six months old, growing. He does not tell me the name of the dog. But, yeah, so a lot of celebrity names for dogs. Okay. Bob Barker. Phil Collins. Why does your dog have an extraordinarily large forehead? Is it losing its, its I fur? I just think it's top? funny to, to name like after like old iconic people, like LL Cool J. Or, <laughs> he licks his lips like a lot. Pee Wee Herman or whatever the hell. What, uh, what was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the lady that was always on Love Boat? Charo. 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 Yeah. Oh, this is a- <laughs> Could Charo, you- come on. <laughs> this is Charo. Cha-cha-cha. The cha-cha lady. <laughs> <laughs> the hoochie coochie woman. I'd name my dog Tattoo, or after the actor. This is Hervé Velazquez. Yes. <laughs> Ricardo <laughs> and his buddy, Ricardo, Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> Hello, Anthony. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So, a little bit of a backstory. Um, I used to work in a weld shop, and we would throw firecrackers and stuff in on each other. Smoke bombs, black cats, things like that. Seems to be the welding and- way. Exactly. So I got tired of it. I decided to move on to chemical warfare. And I found a product called Liquid Ass. Oh, Not to be confused with liquid smoke and ruin a perfectly good cookout. Liquid ass, you say? Yes, liquid ass. Okay. (laughs) Is this a prank thing that you would drop on somebody that would smell like poop? Um, It smells worse than poop. I mean, imagine walking around on a Midwest summer day with all the humidity and what your butt crack would smell like at that point in time. (laughs) All right. I'm imagining. Just like it says on the bottle. Yes. Just like on vacation. Exactly. So I I wait for somebody to get to the middle of a weld or whatever they're doing, and I walk up and just squirt a little bit on the back of their collar. (laughs) Oh. They, uh, they they lift up their hood, look around, because thinking somebody dropped a deuce somewhere in their area, and they could never figure out what it was. How long did this go on? Uh, this went on for uh, about a day before I could before somebody found the bottle in my toolbox. <laughs> <laughs> and did they use it against you? No, no, they did not. Fortunately. Okay. All right. But uh, where does one find liquid ass? Because oh, I dude, I'm looking at it. It's just liquidass.com. <laughs> 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 liquid ass is an overwhelming, stinky, funny prank product. It's a prank product. Uh, I guess sometimes we you, overthink things. Now, you, it's a foul butt crack smell with hints of dead animal and fresh poo. I have to ask: Is this, is the game is the game ever over, or is the game, no matter what the game is, always on in your profession? Um. The game is always on. Hey, what is the game now? Matter. What is the game now? Uh, well, the game now has kind of died down. We're we're kind of moving on to uh, you know set each other on fire. And stuff. All right, I was gonna say what's the oh. new what's the oh, new level graduated. Of All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but a few years later, I did the same thing to at another job, and uh, I was in the bathroom and I just soaked a piece of toilet paper with it and left it in the bathroom, and. Uh, Went in a few minutes later, people are gagging. One guy's coming out. He's dying, telling me, you know, don't go in there. Somebody just murdered the bathroom. <laughs> Unfortunately, here, it's just real. It what, really was the, uh, what was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. How much, uh, how much does it cost for some liquid ass, then? Uh, you can get a four-pack for 25 uh, basically 30 bucks. Oh, it's hell. How, many, how many are per bottle? How many ounces per bottle of... Uh, it's of- a small little bottle. I like how they have the state of Texas on there. It must be made there. What? I just like that they have different, like, you can get the liquid ass four pack, All the right. bar fume four pack, the Tex ass four pack. Tex oh. ass? The six packs, yeah. Do they, is there, do they describe so, it different? Like, does it smell like I ate barbecue if it's chili Tex ass? Right. It doesn't. But I will say this they also offer not just a human turd, it's a premium fake human turd <laughs> with corn and hair. Oh, oh, and oh, hey, oh, her. Oh, Hold on, let me see. Oh. That is correct, sir. Do you remember that fake stuff that we got that looked like poop? It said it was called Nope, It's Soap. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually soap. 
I could never bring myself to bathe oh, with a man. Oh, nope, it's so, I mean, it was just so realistic looking. This is, uh, this is true, and this is odd. And my aunt tells this. She went on a blind date with a guy, and she's older, okay? So she goes on a blind date. She's probably in her mid to late 50s when she goes on this date. She said the date was going reasonably well. I guess the guy was cool, but he had he'd steered this whole thing so that they end up walking toward a pier. Beautiful water, blah, 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 she explains it, right? So... <laughs> They're walking along the pier, and as best she can tell, it looked like someone's dog had taken a massive dump, like right at the end of the pier. And so she kind of points it out to him, like, damn, you know, it's beautiful here. The water's going, and like somebody left their, their, their dog's poop there. And her blind date walks up, and she says, picks up this turd and puts it in his mouth, okay? So, right, okay? And she has the reaction that any normal person would have if you see someone do this. And again, this is wild. This is a blind date. Turns out it was a fake turd that he had put there because he thought it would be funny. And that's like, not going to be the thing that's going to probably turn on your... Uh, they did not go on another date. I, would I was guess like, not. really? She was like, everything was fine until he did that. I'm but like, thank God he did. I'm like, it's kind of funny. And she's like, that's not on a first mm, date. No. So remember that, guys. If you plan on eating a fake turd on her? a first date... I'll just munch on this turd. Uh, don't. Yeah, that's one month in. Right. What was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. Yeah, at the one month mark, eat a fake turd. <laughs> Hello, Ch- Hello, Joe. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, boys. Hola. Hola. So years ago, I used to work at an auto parts store, and we were uh, clearancing out old air fresheners that were not selling very well one day. And uh, we had these six packs of those tree air fresheners of strawberry scent, and Mm -hmm. we never sold a single one. So we had four of these six packs. They went from about 10 bucks each to about $3. And with my employee discount, I got all 24 for just over a dollar. Luckily, I had a friend who had just left town for a week to go visit his mom down in Arizona, so I grabbed another buddy, went over to his house, and uh, we opened, you know how you're supposed to open, like, about a half inch at a time, and this thing is good for about six weeks? Sure. Well, we opened all 24 completely. We were rubbing them into the steering wheel, the seat belt, the seat back, the headliner, the dashboard, the radio controls, the gear shifter, the e-brake, everything. And we left all 24 in there, closed it, locked it back up, and then he came home a week later, and I I wish I could have been there to see his face, but my other friend was, and he said, he got to the car, and he just dead stopped, and he said, do you smell anything? And it's my friend, he said he had to bite his tongue so hard, he actually cut himself because he would, didn't want to laugh at his face, but for about a month after, everywhere he went, he just smelled, he just reeked of horrible chemical strawberry smell. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was school. The bank, he went out to eat, we just, we like, go sit outside, you, you reek, we can't, you can't be in here. <laughs> you, you be, man, you'd be surprised. If your car smells like something and it's, and it's strong, you will smell like that smell. Absolutely. My buddy Brian, man, he always, he, he, he delivered for, uh, Spruce Street Sub Shop and fries with everything. Man, you get a sandwich, comes fries, 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 fries. His car smelled like French fries. He smelled like French fries. Anytime yeah. you were around Brian, he mm-hmm. smelled like French fries. You're like, Let's just go get a sub, man. Because after a while, you're like, man, you like your car smells like French fries. You smell like French fries. But now, you get these sense. It wasn't a bad smell. It's not bad. But you don't want to. My fa- when when we first moved to Baltimore years ago, at the time, McCormick Spice is where he worked, and he worked administrative stuff. But at that time, their processing of the spice plant was in the same building. It was right in downtown uh, Baltimore. So he would go to work in a suit, but you, I mean, you drove to downtown at that time, you could smell the peppers maybe from about a, a mile away, but it's open air, the sky is the ceiling, it wasn't overwhelming, all right? So he would get home from work, man, and he, it's like when you open a spice cabinet that hasn't been open in a month, mm-hmm. he reeked of everything that they're doing, and again, it's not that paprika or black pepper smells bad, but it's when strong. It's but we realized, well, he realized, we got desensitized to it in about a week because that's just what he smelled like. Your brain recognized, not a threat, it's weird. But So we kind of forgot that he smelled weird. And we had a uh, guest over, and my parents were showing them around the house. And my father converted this old bedroom into a closet, it's like a real small bedroom, he made it into a closet. There were suits in there. And I remember he opened the door, but there was a physical reaction from these people. They're like, oh, they're like, what? It, it, it smells like pepper. And we're like, oh, no, does it? And they're like, Yes! So my father had to explain, like, mm-hmm. every single day, I re- and you couldn't dry clean it out. There was absolutely not. But the thing is, you're right. The car started smelling like that. So as a kid, he's driving me some. I get out of the car. Now people are like, dude, why do you smell like pepper? I'm like, it's it's just too much to explain. Yep. Just accept that I smell like pepper. What, uh, what was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. 
Hello, Jason. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. All right, guys. So about 10 years ago, I had a minivan that I took on a road trip from Washington to Montana and back for a family reunion. The day afterwards, we go uh, to grocery shop and buy a huge load of groceries because my wife's been without the the bigger car to transport everything. And uh, that's going to come back later. But weeks go by. And then suddenly, this smell starts creeping into the van. And we couldn't really place it. You know, I've smelled death before. It wasn't quite that bad, but it wasn't great. And so time goes on. It gets a little worse, a little worse. But it gets really bad when you turn the fence off. And so we're thinking it must be like condensation in the fence, something like that. So I try to deodorize some. I change cabin filters, air filters. We're trying air fresheners, and it is just getting worse. It's getting so bad after weeks. We had to, like, have our heads outside the van to drive it. <laughs> and we could not figure out what it was, what where it was coming from. Finally, one day, I just lose it, and I am determined to uh, pull everything out of this van and clean everything I have to, bleach it, whatever I've got to do to get this smell out. So going through the back of the van there, I have this bag full of emergency road supply stuff like, uh, you know, uh, uh, jumper cable, stuff like that. And it never left the view. So pull that out to go to clean around it and everything. And I find one of those uh, one-pound logs of meat that used to be ground turkey, I think. Uh. That's when it started its life. And it had been in there so long that it... It, it swelled and then burst oh. and because it was underneath this thing and behind it we just we couldn't locate it and it was in the back of the van and the smell was only strong when it would pick the air up from the, the back vents and recycle it so we had no idea that's Make nasty sure you yeah take everything out of your car when you go grocery shopping. yeah that's yeah cool. yeah and then oh. it's a pack of turkey meat that that bloated and uh, exploded. Uh. Bloated and exploded. Mm-mm, Jimmy Dean. <laughs> what uh, What was the source of the smell? 844-999. Ola, more your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola, bitches. You're listening to the Men's Room. We head to Clear Creek Township. Police are looking for whoever is responsible for defecating on the floor of a home under construction four times since May the 6th. On May 13th, shortly after 8 p.m., surveillance video caught two people illegally entering the home under construction in the Country Brook subdivision. It sounds lovely. One of the subjects in the video is believed to have defecated on the floor. The fourth such incident since May. Several homes in the subdivision have sold for over $1 million. Oh. The mad pooper is still on the loose. Our question, what was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. A couple more comments as they roll in. When my cousin got married, it was 120 degrees out. His brothers took two dead fish and laid them on the manifold of the wedding car. The bride and groom fired up the air conditioner. They made it about two blocks before the rotten fish smell filled the oh. car. Why would you ruin someone's car? Why not? Yeah. Well, uh, man, it's a, that's what you got to do to the bride and groom. You got to play some kind of prank on. Yeah, man. Okay, dead fish. And thirty years ago, my mom cleaned houses. Now she walked into a client's house and into this horrible smell. Found out the guy had been dead for five days. Man, a lot of those. Oh man, mm-hmm. that's a. Uh, there was a guy in Australia who was a hoarder, and they said he would walk up and down the road. Neighbors would see him. He would say a casual hello. And that was about it, and they were concerned after a few weeks when they could not find him. So they knock on the door, and there he is somewhere in the house. They found him dead. All right, so a couple weeks go by, and they determine that somebody, and nobody claimed this guy relative-wise or anything else. They need to go in there. They need to gut the house. They need to get rid of all the stuff. They start pulling out all the things that this hoarder has collected throughout the years. Lo and behold, they get to the back of the place, and there's a body that's been wrapped up in a uh, blanket, in a rug for years. They don't know if it's man. They don't know if it's female. The stench, they said, was so nasty in this area that the body rotted through the floorboards of the house, and the body was actually indented into the wooden floor. Kind of like a... Think of like Han Solo in... Oh, uh, the carbonite or whatever it was, right. Like kind of halfway in the floor, but halfway above it. 
Like it just, the body had just melted in. But he had the luxury of being in a movie. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, yeah, and he was famous. So I mean, do they think he's one of those guys, like his wife died, you know what I mean? And because Maybe sadly, just, yeah, could you be. hear this kind of thing. It seems like with people that hoard or they've gotten older, they're a little loony. Like, hey, man, your wife died three mm. years ago. And they, they had nothing to do with the death. But they just kind of wrap them up and leave them in the house. Uh, you yeah, know, whatever. Still to come, Bad Jokes on the way. The Drunk and Charge Ryan Castle will be in to kick off Bad Jokes. Ted versus the FCC coming up. And we will drink and toast with the shot of the day. And more of your calls on our question. What was the source of the smell? 844-999-OLA. The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.